Hello, my responsible second graders. Welcome back. Today, we are going to read a story from our favorite social emotional learning storybook called The Lima Bean Plant. But before we get started, I just want to tell you that today I want to teach you about responsibility and how it's important for us to take responsibility for our actions when we hurt somebody in some sort of situation. So maybe that be that you borrowed something from a friend and then you lost it. Or maybe you borrowed something from a friend or took something from a friend and you broke it. And that might hurt your friend a lot. So it's also very important once you've taken responsibility for your actions to then also take that next step and try to figure out a way to make the situation better and also make the person that you've hurt feel better. So before we start our reading, I want you to think about a time when somebody has hurt you. Maybe that be that somebody did take something of yours and broke it or lost it or said something to you on the playground. So think of a time when someone has hurt you and then I also want you to think about how they could have made the situation better or how they could have made you feel better. How they could have taken that next step to make things much better for you. Have you ever done something that hurt a friend? And what did you do to fix the friendship, the situation? I want you to make your friend feel better about the mistake that you made. So sometimes friends don't get along or they do things that hurt each other, but it's always very important when that happens to talk to your friend about what happened and try to figure out how you can make things better with your friend. So today we're going to read a story about a child who makes a mistake and does something that hurts her friend. And then she tries to figure out a way to help her friend feel better about the situation and to have her friend be able to forgive her. So as we listen to the story, I want you to think about how the characters are feeling um, and what they're thinking and then how they might make the situation better for each other. All right, so here we go. We're going to read the story, The Lima Bean Plants. We are going to read The Lima Bean Plant. It was a Monday afternoon and the sun was shining as Kenny walked out of Sanford Street School. He was carefully carrying a small pot that sprouted leafy green stems and thin, spiraling tendrils. What's that? asked his friend Kayla as she joined him. It's a lima bean plant, he explained. My class planted beans and now the weather is finally warm enough for us to take them home to plant outside. I'm going to give it to my dad for his birthday this week, and I bet he'll put it right in his vegetable garden. That's neat, said Kayla. Do you think that you'll help your dad plant it? Kenny nodded. Sure. I've been helping him in the garden ever since I was a little kid. We don't have any lima beans planted this year, so my dad is really going to like this. Kenny and Kayla walked to the treehouse in the park where they played every day after school. When they got there, Kenny carefully set his plant near a sunny window and then got a bottle of water from his backpack and drizzled some onto the soil. My dad says that when plants are young, you really have to be sure to keep the soil damp so the roots don't dry out, he explained. Well, your dad would know, said Kayla. He grows some of the biggest vegetables I've ever seen. For the rest of the afternoon, the kids played games and helped each other practice their spelling words. When it was time to go home, Kenny looked at his plant and said, I really wish I could leave it here for a few days and then surprise my dad on his birthday. But my grandma is coming to visit tomorrow, so I can't play after school until the end of the week. Well, I can take care of it for you, offered Kayla. You can leave it on the table and I'll check on it every afternoon when I'm here. Okay, thanks, said Kenny. Just make sure to keep it nice and damp. 
On Wednesday, Kayla played with a friend that was at the treehouse until it was time to go home. She didn't remember to check on Kenny's plant, so she didn't notice that the edges of its leaf were starting to get brown. On Thursday, it was so hot that Kayla decided to go to a friend's house to swim instead of going to the treehouse. She never saw that Kenny's plant was getting more and more dry and crinkly. Uh-oh. Kayla made a promise to Kenny that she would look after this plant. Uh-oh. On Wednesday, Kayla played with a friend that was at the treehouse until it was time to go home. She didn't remember to check on Kenny's plant, so she didn't notice that the edges of its leaves were starting to get brown. Uh-oh, that's not good. On Thursday, it was so hot that Kayla decided to go to a friend's house to swim instead of going to the treehouse. She never saw that Kenny's plant was getting more and more dry and crinkly. Uh-oh, this plant does not look healthy anymore. It doesn't have enough water. And what did, what did Kenny tell Kayla in the beginning? Good, that she needs to make sure that the soil stays nice and moist. And she hasn't been watering this plant at all. When they arrived at the treehouse, the kids climbed up the ladder and Kenny went over to the table to get his plant. Oh no! He exclaimed. The lima bean plant was right where Kenny had left it but it was no longer green and shiny. It was hard and brown and withered. Kenny turned to Kayla with his arms crossed. I thought you were going to take care of it for me. I wonder if Kayla's going to take responsibility for her actions. Kayla felt badly that the plant was dead, but she really didn't mean to forget about it. It's not my fault. You never reminded me, she answered. Kayla, you said that you would water it for me every day, Penny said with a frown. We're having a birthday dinner tonight, and now I don't have anything to give my dad. Kayla looked down and bit her lip. She didn't want Kenny to be mad at her, and she really didn't mean to let his plant die. But Kenny was right. It was her responsibility to take care of the plant. It was my job and I forgot, Kayla admitted. I wish this didn't happen, Kenny, and I wish you weren't sad now. Good, so Kayla's taking responsibility for her actions. She's talking about what's going on. And she's listening and understanding Kenny's feelings. Because she knows that he's really sad and upset right now about the fact that she couldn't uphold her responsibility of watering the plant. Kenny didn't say anything for a minute. He was really upset, but he knew that Kayla hadn't let his plant die on purpose. She probably feels awful too, he thought. Are you really mad at me? Kayla asked. Well, I guess I was mad at you at first, but I know it was an accident, answered Kenny. I forgive you, so I'm not mad anymore but I'm still upset that I don't have a present for my dad now. I know, said Kayla, sitting down next to him. I really want to make things better. There isn't anything you can do, said Kenny sadly. You can't make a dead plant start to grow again. I really like in this part how Kayla is looking towards the future and trying to fix things. She's saying, I really want to make things better. So I wonder how she is going to make things better. Let's see. Kayla and Kenny sat and looked at the withered plant. Kayla thought about how much fun it was to visit the garden at Kenny's house every year and to finally see green shoots come up through the soil as the vegetables started to grow. She knew how much he loved to help his dad in the garden and she thought about how he must be feeling right now. What could I do to fix things, she wondered. And the fact that she is continuously thinking of how she can fix things with Kenny shows that she cares for him and cares how he's feeling. Suddenly, Kayla snapped her fingers. I have an idea, she exclaimed. We can't make this plant grow, but we sure 
we can sure make a, a new one grow. She hurried to the top of the treehouse ladder and began climbing down. Come on, Kenny, she called, and bring your plant. As the two friends ran across the park towards Kayla's house, she explained, My family eats lima beans a lot. I'll bet we have some dried beans in our kitchen. Kayla got some lima beans from her mom and gave them to Kenny, along with a colorful plastic cup. That is my favorite cup, she explained. I want to give it to you for your new plant. Kayla helped Kenny take the dead plant out of the pot, pour the soil into the new cup, and plant the beans in the soil. Then they watered it carefully so the soil was nice and damp. This was a great idea, said Kenny. I won't be able to help my dad plant it in the garden for a while, but now we can wait for it to sprout together. This is a wonderful, wonderful job on Kayla's part. She thought about a way that she could make Kenny feel better, and then she went above and beyond, and she gave him her favorite cup, and she's giving him a plant that he can now watch grow and sprout with his dad instead of giving him nothing. So yes, Kayla did make a mistake, but it looks right now like she's really making up for it. She cares about Kenny. It was almost time for the birthday dinner, so Kayla walked Kenny home. I wish I hadn't ruined your first plant, she said. Next time, I will really try to do what I say I'll do. It's okay, said Kenny. Everybody makes mistakes, and I feel a lot better now. I'm glad we're still friends. And Kayla was, too. So I absolutely love the story. I think it's a great way to show us when we make a mistake, how we can take responsibility for our actions, and then how we can take that next step to make sure that the situation is better and that we can make our friend feel better with the mistake that we've made. And then at the end, Kenny was able to forgive Kayla for what she did because she took the time to really think of a way to make things better. She didn't just apologize and walk away and that was it. She really put in the effort to try and find a way to fix things in their friendship. And that shows that Kayla really cares about Kenny. When we hurt somebody, there are three steps that we can take that help us make amends, and then hopefully allow our friends to forgive us for what we have done. So the three steps, step number one is to say your part. So this part is gonna be you taking responsibility for your actions. So for example, let's, let's use Kayla. So Kayla said after she, she lied, she lied at first, but then she took responsibility for her actions. And she told him that she had forgotten to water the plants and she was very sorry. So she first took responsibility for her actions. Step two is to speak from your heart. So in the story, Kayla was able to express her feelings about the situation from the heart. And she told him that she was very sad to see him sad. She didn't like to see him sad in the situation that she had made. So she was able to speak from the heart. So you could say, I wish you weren't feeling this way. I'm really sorry that I did this. Giving those words of kind of encouragement, but showing that you care. And then our last step, our third step, is to fix what has been broken. So in this case, Kayla took the next step, the last step, to think about an idea, which was to go home, get a really nice cup, actually her favorite cup, and to put lima beans in it. So she really took this last step. She did a good job and she was able to fix what she had, she had broken. And at the end, we do see that they make amends. Kayla is able to fix what she's broken and make Kenny feel really good about the situation at the end and he is able to forgive her. So they, at the end, say, I'm really glad that we're still friends. So these are the three steps that you can take to make amends with your friend if you ever hurt them. Make sure that you're trying to make things better because when we hurt a friend, we don't wanna see them in pain. We don't wanna see them hurt. So it's important to take these three steps to make sure that we make things better and make them feel better.